morning Dark clouds rising Oh, there's no sunshine Anywhere Strong winds blowing God give us wisdom To grasp the message In the air Oh, if I could have one wish And know that it would come true I'd wish that God would give us strength To know just what to do Then we could tear down the fences That fence us all in Fences created by such evil Welcome to Season 6, Episode 1, Wednesday Night Bible Studies at Lady Babylon. This is fa uh, fantastic. Um, it, we're going tonight. Let me just introduce this by saying, <sighs> get your gear ready. Tonight, we're going to mainline with Jesus. Yeah, you heard me. You heard me tonight on Lady Babylon. We are going to mainline with Jesus. Whoo! You didn't know he was like that, did you? I'm going to show you how to get Christed. Then I'm going to introduce you to a vampire tonight on Lady Babylon. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, tonight, before we push in, I'm going to start with a couple of comments. And I want to start by saying, we, we're always going to have a good and a bad. I wanted to start by saying, uh, Snappy, thank you so much for letting me know that I needed to get you the source. People were not believing when I said Medea was the queen of Babylon. They looked at me funny. So um, we got the source eventually, um, and sometimes I, oh, Philostratus, yeah, I almost, see, I almost forgot him right there. Anywho, says that she's the queen of Babylon. Thank you, Snappy, for pushing on that one, right? Those sources are good. I'm, I'm, I'm giving your guys in religious studies, I'm giving them a hard time, I'm bashing them around, but you, sir, you, sir, are attached to the sources, and I... I respect that. I respect that. Tonight, let's go to the good comment to start with. Who, who sent me something nice? Just please. Can I just feel, I want to feel good about myself. This is Humble Thanker. I like that name. Dr. Amon, is Mary Magdalene to Jesus as Medea is to Jason? Wow, that's the most spectacular question. And I'm going to answer it linguistically there is a 16th century cryptologist who talks about the magdal being a scythian word that is the equivalent of the maga right not the magos but the maga this is the one that came before did the witch come before the wizard Yes, it turns out historically she did. Who else was going to figure out all that stuff? Right? It took a lot of brains. Here we go. Here we go. I want to bring you that MAGA. That MAGA is the MEDWA. And that MEDWA is in charge, is in union with the Iasus. Yeah. So is there a relation between them? Yeah, these are all cult titles, people. We're going to read these things over and over again, right? Wow, until we see it. It's all there. Love it. Great question. Great question. That's what happens when you stay in the cult. 
right? It's what happens. You get the, you get the queen and the Christ. Isn't that nice? Love it. Who do you think was supplying all the drugs? Yeah. It wasn't Jesus. Yeah. He knows how to make the punch. But he was getting it all from Mary, the MAGA. Yeah. Yeah. You can call her a prostitute if you want to. Um, but tonight, since we're going to mainline, we're going to mainline with Jesus. And I know some of you are sensitive about using terms like that. We're talking about historical mainlining. We're going to find that place where you can take that Christed poison. You can get it right into the blood. Whoo! Fantastic. Fantastic. You, I mean, I've got to give you the best stuff. That's why you're here. I know your time is limited. I'm stopping at 30 tonight. I'm going to stop myself. So um, let's get to the let's get to the vampire that I'd like to bring you first. Let's wash. Oh, we need another. Con I forgot the bad. We've had the good. We have to have the bad. OK, throw up the bad. OK, this is from Naruto. Another interesting experience particularly unpleasant particularly unpleasant not just unpleasant it's particularly unpleasant i expected at least at very least something from philo okay take it down take it down i cannot take this person seriously anymore i can't no i'm gonna laugh i'm gonna laugh and it's rude it's rude to do that but my children in the world, there are perpetrators with trench coats. And they will take you places and do things to you. Yeah, yeah, they, that's what they do. That's, that's their nature. If I were at a professional conference in the middle of a bunch of classical philologists, who had given the sweat and blood and earned that spot. If I pulled out Philo, <laughs> right away, right away, right? You lose your credibility right away when you do that, Naruto. You lose your credibility because Naruto, there are Bible studies. There are studies of the Torah. There are Bible studies. There are seminaries. There are New Testament departments. And in these departments, Naruto, there are no philologists. Philologists are those who have reached a level of expertise where they are expected to go to the international gymnasia and wrestle. That's what they're expected to do. You cannot get by on what Bible studies does for you. It is a sinking ship that has been barely floating for the last 1,600 years. Yeah. You see, because there's a problem in the universe. The problem is the classical philologists are the professionals with the classical texts, right? You should be able to throw a classical philologist, anything from Homer, throw him a little bit of Tacitus, Woo, a little curveball there. How about some juvenile? Can you slip in? Do you know how to do meter between both languages? Okay, those are the people that you consult. What's weird in this universe the watchers still haven't figured it out. But what's really weird here is that those experts are experts in everything but the Bible and the Septuagint included when I say Bible. Yeah. Yeah. And do you know why? Let me just tell you, as a former prof myself, you do not want to risk the engagement 
because a classical philologist, I'm just telling you this tonight, a classical philologist can tear your BS apart because for every second that you have read, they have read millions. It is their life. They have devoted themselves to this sacred space. So when you pull out Philo, that's what the seminarians do. That's what the religious schools do. And it, look, my children, when these people in trench coats come to you, they're going to open that trench coat. They're going to open it up <sighs> with a big seminarian smile on their face. They're going to show you the twins. The twins, Josephus and Philo. And you're going to gag on those twins. You're going to gag on them. What I recommend you do, um, because the people at the time said, hey, you know that guy Josephus, he's making up sources. <laughs> right? Right? Number That's a huge problem. This all culminates, people. Please understand me why this is so important. This all culminates in Julian the Apostate, we call him. Julian the Apostate, who made a decree. Nobody can teach classics who's an atheist. Interesting. Interesting. And why would that be, Julian? Because they corrupt the text. It's their intention in establishing their own fake history. Do you mean this is about power? This is about power, essentially about a power grab? Oh, yeah. What do you think those humans do? The... the, the uh, aren't you guys the Episcopoi? Aren't you the ones who are watching all of this go around? Oh, God. Let's hit some text. Let's purify it. Here's the vampire. I want to purify us now with the vampire. Chuck, bring Chuck in. Chuck, step up. see Lady Babylon again um, in form and in beauty. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. I appreciate it. Everybody hand of, a round of applause for Chuck Baudelaire. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Mm. Let's bring in our first text. I want to take you so we can mainline with Jesus. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's go see Jesus mainlining. I want to give you the first tonight of our text. Um, yep. Go ahead and pull that up. <clears throat> I want to just give you, oh, take it down real quick. Let me give him an intro while I'm talking. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Um, alien. Alien. Uh, who's this person? Um, to your Philo. See, that's the thing. You call up Philo, I'm going to call up Elian. And unfortunately for you, unfortunately for you, who, by the way, wh whatever that guy's name is, I want to give him the KIP, the KIP Award of Courage. 
to pull out Philo <laughs> in a discussion of the Logos is amazing. And one you can take home. You can always take home. Everybody, we can all take home that, that little bit of Zeno. That little bit of Zeno who said, Ho theos esti. Ho spermaticos logos tu cosmu. God is the spermatic logos of the organization. Boom. Love it. Love it. That's the real stuff. You get that? Um, it's achronic, and that's what Nonus was trying to tell you last week. Achronos. Those of you with ears to hear, I know you picked it up. Achronos. Love it. Okay. Boom. Let's uh, bring up our first text of Elian. This, oh, bring it down again. I forgot to introduce him properly. Um, we're talking about, you know, a little bit after the time of Marcus Aurelius. Um, and Elian comes into the picture, and this guy is educated, educated, educated. And as a highly, highly educated person, his proficiency with Greek is just phenomenal. They called him, you know, the honey tongued because his Greek was so good. Good for you. Good for you. He's, he's atticizing a little bit here. This is a little bit of second sophistic for those of you who are into it. Now I've worked with this passage with several students. I'm just going to give you a, I'm just going to translate it very quickly because we don't have a lot of time. We want to face it, right? Our attention. Let's go. Bring it up. What's going to happen? You know, the bites of the viper and of other types of snakes. People say that, you know, we have curatives for this. We have drugs for this. And I hear that these drugs are in two forms. They're either pomata, they're either potions, or they're hrimata. They are things that you apply as Christing. Kai epoides. So he goes on and he says, hey, you know, the epodes. And by the way, Elian, take it down for a minute. Who is this guy, Elian? Just for those of you who, who, who are interested, he's kind of, he's writing a work on zoology. Yeah, he's writing a zoological work. And the good thing is, is his sources, which there are a ton of, um, we don't necessarily have those surviving anywhere else, right? Do you see people for a second? Do you see how big it is? Do you see how big it is? We're not looking for that scrap. We're not looking for the scraps. Look, somebody threw away an old parchment. It's got a scrap, a scribble. We're not looking for that. We're looking for the stuff that was in the libraries. We're looking for the stuff that the people were working with right? This is Elian. You're dealing with a major thinker of the day. And I know that most of you, and you shouldn't, most of you don't know who he is. Yeah. Yeah. So zoologist, just think zoologist here. Now we're going to watch. Are you ready? We're getting close. We're talking about two types of drugs. We're talking about the drugs that you drink. Those are the pomata, right? And then we're talking about the drugs that you hrio, that you in hrio, um, that you apply otherwise. And this can mean to the eyes, it's any other application that you are not swallowing. If you, there are those you swallow and those you apply otherwise. Otherwise. And mainlining. And when I say mainline, what do I mean historically? Some of you may absolutely understand this and some of you may not but you are entering that stream you are entering that stream you're finding that blood and pushing into the blood that's mainlining yes oh god that's what jesus is doing it's what jesus is doing and you say oh my god you're going to show me in text an alien where Jesus, I'm going to show you the Christ. You cannot be Christ without injecting it right into your veins. What? Yes, linguistically, it's gorgeous. Bring up the text again. Are you ready? Let's keep reading it. Let's keep reading it. He says, what? 
you know, you can drink it or you can have it applied as the Christ. And he says there are incantations that are effective at kind of mollifying or softening. Softening what? Ton eon. Many of you see that line, ton eon, because you're working on the Greek and you know. That's the toxin that they use with the arrow poisons. When you take this thing and you increase centa it, when it enters directly, oh my God, there is nothing better, right? You've got to have a mollifying drug, right? And he's saying the epodes help. The incantations are part of it. You ask yourself, take it down for a second, why are these people, why are these people going through incantations? You see even straight up in antiquity, straight up doctoring, where the doctor, somebody will have broken a limb, and the doctor is um, repairing the limb, putting the uh, bone back to try to set the bone. And um, while they're doing it, they are um, encanting. Singing a song while they're doing it. And the song helps them to reset, yeah, to reduce the, the, the break. Isn't that great? That's fantastic. So the incantations are there, and they help when you've been Christed. I want you to put up that next, should we put up that next uh, Greek? Yeah. I just want you to look at this verb, enchrio, enchrio, right? Look at, notice at the top, anoint. What kind of parts are you going to anoint? Look at the second line, ophthalmos, the eyes, right? We ain't talking about boys in a gym. We are talking about sending someone into the world of the Christ, Oh my God! Look at that! Look at number two. Take down the Bible studies, Chewy. Look at number. Look at number two. Okay, just just Roman numeral number two. Look, sting or prick. Wait a minute. To in Christ something means to prick. Yes, yes. Poison injected by a sting. Number two at the very bottom to stick in, and they give you the word for the thorn. Boom! You know what you can do? You can put this stuff on a th on a uh, thorn. You can put this stuff on a thorn, and you can get it in. You can in Christ yourself. You can in Christ yourself. Isn't that fantastic? Oh my God, Elian! What does he say? Well, okay, look. We're not done with the drugs yet in that quote. Just bring it up. I'll go through it quickly because I know people got to run. Quickly. Let's do it. Look at this. Um, he says, look, it's okay. He said, it, he says, it's okay to hate something that, you know, these snakes that have this power to kill, right, to do bad. It's okay. He says, but there's something worse. There's a beast that's far worse and something you're not going to be able to, to guard yourself against. And that is the Gune Pharmakis. The Gune Pharmakis. What is the, I'm looking for this woman, like anthropologically, right? I mean, I hate to, go ahead, take it off. I hate to blow my cover, but I'm just a transdimensional anthropologist. And I'm looking for this woman because she um, is going to help me solve the case of why Jesus was arrested in a public park with a naked kid yelling, I'm not a sex trafficker. Yes. Wow. We're going to find out. You misspelled Lestes, by the way. Nice. Nice. I had to get that little dig in there. I'm sorry. I can't, I can't help it. But if you're going to be professional and refute, bring the, you know, bring the professional. Yeah. Love it. Love it. <sighs> Let's go back to the text. There's something even more dangerous. That Gune, that woman who is the Pharmakis. He says, for example, Medea and Circe. Right? And why is that? You can take it down. He says, why is that? Why is that? That snake is killing you with its bite. That snake is killing you with its bite. 
it's drugs, boom, direct application. He said, you know what's even scarier than that? The women who have developed this science. Get this. They can kill you with a touch. They can kill you with a touch. Now, this isn't a mystery initiate devotee who's writing this. It's not a priest, right? It's not someone who's going to have some kind of axe to grind. This is, oops, sorry. This is a person who is writing about zoology and using sources that are telling him, oh, this plant is that plant. This animal is that animal. Yeah, fantastic. This one's poisonous. That one's the most poisonous. He says that everybody knows the, the Egyptian cobra is the one that you can't that you can't stay away from right we our antidotes will work on all of them but that one yeah isn't that neat how scientific if that doesn't turn turn you on intellectually nothing will okay i want to give you a couple more texts um look people were asking questions maybe the next text um people were asking questions uh why is this significant about um the Hebrew not being there in the society. Um, I just want to show you a work. This is, of course, brought to you by 1840s German classical philological scholarship in Leipzig. Something. Those people were smoking something because the productivity was amazing. And their source work phenomenal phenomenal whatever those guys were doing whoo gorgeous one of them put together you know lives lives of different types of writers now he put it together in eight books and each of the books is dedicated to one type of skill we have epic poetry we have lyric poetry we have rhetoric, we have tragedy, we have comedy. Yeah, yeah. And he talks about all the famous people whose works you and I know. Because how are you and I educated? We're not from Florida. Yeah. We were educated from tiny, tiny on Homer and other poets. That language, when somebody comes to you and says, I think this about the New Testament or about the Septuagint, about the Bible, when they do that, ask them, ask them, where does it come through Homer? Because that's the standard grammar. If you're going to be in the universe, you better know Homer. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. That's why every classical vlog just have to take a certain amount of Homer. Yeah. Uh huh. Fantastic. So I'm not going to throw you any curveballs, guys. We're still demon not monetized. We're not demonetized. We're we've never been monetized. We're not trying to get monetized. Okay. I have nothing to sell you. There's no merch. I don't want. I don't want any chats throwing money. Right. I appreciate the fact that everybody's got a voice. Nobody has to attach money to it. Okay, fantastic. Um, hit us with the hit us with the next. Yeah, bring that up there. Here, here's just an example. Look, Nicander. He's going to talk about Nicander, and you know, my God, man. There's in each of the field. There's a few famous people that we all recognize, right? And then he's just got oodles and oodles and oodles of author after author after author after author. Realize at the time, there is no Hebrew. It doesn't exist. It is not a literary language. It has died. And most of the people, most of the people in Palestine and Judea, they don't care. They don't care. They love Greek just fine. Thank you. Yeah. It is always a religiously zealous minority historically, that will come along to 
turn the situation to their political favor. It was in the favor of that religious minority to revive this dead corpse that was classical Hebrew. And again, remember, for those of you who want to travel, I'm not talking about modern Hebrew. Modern Hebrew is flourishing. It's flourishing. It's blossomed. Somehow, they brought life to the language in Israel. Yes, and it's going to be happy and healthy. Happy and healthy. Classical Hebrew? Oh, my goodness. It's a mummified corpse. It's, oh, God, it's terrible. It's, oh. So um, that's why I ask people, the reason that you're not seeing in Hebrew during the time is it's dead. Nobody's writing in Hebrew. You've been using Greek in the synagogues. Right? Nobody's writing in Hebrew. So what, where are you going to go with the... Uh, um, where are you going to go with your sources if you're going to be um, saying, I'm expecting to find some kind of Hebrew link so that the language can be holy, the Bible can be correct, and I can go to heaven or whatever. Yeah, but that is the joke. The joke's on you. There are professionals who laugh at biblical scholarship, so-called. You know, and the agenda that it tows. Julian the apostate was right. Nobody who's an atheist, and by atheist they were talking about any of the monists who were saying there are no gods but blank. Any of those atheists will corrupt the system. You cannot have them teach. But what happens? You get Florida. You get dark ages. You get banned things, and you get people saying, this can't be taught, that can't be taught. Right? Yeah, sign of the times. Let's hit that text again. I didn't want to take this long. I'm sorry. I value your time, and I want everybody to get goodies out of this. So I've got a couple of more. Let me just hit you with a couple of more. Keep going down. Um, here, I just wanted you to see. Here's a couple of names, right? Who are these people? Right, they're poets, right? Well, that's nice. Epopoios. That's that's an epic poet, right? Here's an this is has anybody heard of Iscreon? No, you haven't, right? He's a famous epic poet. Isn't that nice? That's gorgeous. Let's go to the next one. No, right? None of these. So when you tell me you know antiquity, you should be quiet. Because look, here's three Dionysiuses. Oh my god. Did you know these are sources? No, there's one of them. One of them's from uh, Byzantium, one of them's from Corinth, and the third one is from Mytilene. Mytilene, isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? That's on the island of Lesbos. That's on the island of Lesbos. My God, man, you want culture? Go to a girls' school in Lesbos where you've got people like Sappho. We have no problem finding references to Sappho quotes of Sappho. Did you know that? Did you know that? We have no problem because she has such a strong reputation. We're not worried about our sources. We have established texts, people. The Bible is written in Greek, the whole thing. We have established texts. We have people quoting that Greek Old Testament. We have them quoting it. We don't have them quoting Hebrew. Because the Hebrew is defunct. It's defunct. Yes. Look at all these authors. Give me the next. Give me the next. Look at all these authors here that I'm, I, I want to introduce you. Oh, look, we ran across the Sibyls. For those of you who are interested in the Sibyl, right? The Sibyl is listed among the, the classical authors. Yeah, within her genre. She's using dactylic hexameter too. She's using the hexameter too. She belongs with the epic poets. She belongs with them. Yes. She's the, she's the source of that dactylic hexameter. Yeah, so it's sort of they belong to her. But let's just see the Sybil real quick. What did that say? I just wanted to bring up about the Sybil. They're talking about the Sybil of Delphi. What did they call her? What did they call her? They called her 
Artemis. Artemis. Wait, are you sure that it says that? Um, yeah, it turns out that they're calling, you can take it down, that they're calling people gods. Try to grasp this for a minute. Break out of the fairy tale and try to grasp the fact that there were people walking around in their civilization who were considered, dressed as, and worshipped as gods. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that is amazing, right? That right there, that's something. When you have been into the mystery and you have been through that pharmacosexual initiation, you have seen her. You have seen Lady Babylon. And now you know why Lady Babylon is enemy number one of Yahoo. Enemy number one. Have you, have you ever thought about that? Why? Why in the apocalypse? Why is it the way that Lady Babylon is, is the enemy? Why? Yeah. Yeah. It's in the blood. It's in the blood. If you want to be born again, if you want that in Christing, it's going to have to come through the blood on a thorn. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Give me a little more. Give me a little more Greek. Can you give me a little more Greek? Let me just throw, throw out them a couple more things. Those are beautiful, by the way. Judy, thanks. Fantastic. Yep. Anything. There we go. Hey, I, I just want you to see here that um, this one Sybil that is the Chaldean Sybil, he says her name is Sambethe, right? Now, he says some people say that she is the Ibraya, right? Some people say that she is the Persis, right? And this is, this is her real name of power, though. Her real name of power is Sambethe. Yes, and she comes from that genos of that holy priest we all know as Noe. <laughs> you say Noah? No, I said Noe. Before, before you were ever given a Noah, you had Noah, the father of the Sibyl. Yeah, father of the Sibyl. How long does she live? A better question would be, does she die? And who are all the people in history who claim that she doesn't? Yeah. Are you mainlining? All right. If you are mainlining that logos, <clears throat> you've got to get it. You see why the Christians can't reach it? Why the Orthodox uh, Jews can't reach it. Why the Taliban throw an acid in the face of little girls. You know why they cannot reach that place? Because their ancestors all worshipped Aphrodite and Bacchus. And they threw it away. They threw it away for the sake of greed. For the sake of a possession. For the sake of 70 virgins, they threw it all away. You dishonor Aphrodite. You fundamentalists, you dishonor Aphrodite and you hate women as a result. And how do I know that? Because I'm just talking history, man. That's what happens. It always goes that direction. Yeah, when you get rid of the elements of Aphrodite within the cult, you get religions that are misogynistic. Ta-da! Shouldn't be a surprise. Shouldn't be a surprise. Now, you can go the other direction, too. You can get an Amazonian queen. You get an Amazonian queen who um, perhaps is worshipped as a goddess. Yeah. Have you ever been? Let me just ask. The sisterhood of frustration... Have you ever been worshipped? Yeah. 
Yeah. Special dedication to my nun friend in Nazareth. Special dedication. You saw, you saw everything. Your eyes were open. And it was my pleasure to be able to give you that fruit. That's the power. That's the power. Oh, can you feel it? Can you feel that? Okay, throw in that last. Let's go quick. These people want, they're like, shut up. I need dinner. Um, go. Uh, yeah, here, more civil stuff. Look, more civil stuff. Um, great. Uh, th look, I just want you guys to notice this Chaldean or Persian civil, right? All of these civils are following that structure that Medea set up as the queen of Babylon. Did you see the tunnel? She built a tunnel under the river. Can you believe this? And it's, you know, she had to change the direction of the river. She had to waterproof everything. They had to put up art designs. Oh, my God. It's absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. This is the most, um, this is the greatest gem. Medea. Let me just say this. Medea is the greatest undiscovered treasure of humanity the greatest undiscovered treasure of humanity yeah you are the product of her thoughts you are the product of her thoughts if you are a christian and you are sitting watching billy graham with your popcorn if you are in church if you are going to your synagogue to your mosque, you are all servants of the mind of a Bronze Age woman. Your religions were created by her. They are corruptions of what she did. <sighs> this is uh, this is gorgeous, G gorgeousness and gorgeousity. Go to. Go to another one. I hope you, I hope you don't mind. We didn't invite Philo in because if we had Philo sitting here this whole time, you know what we'd be talking about. Yeah, yeah, wouldn't be this. <laughs> Let's go. Um, yeah, that's okay. Here's another Orpheus. I want to show you. Look, there's Orpheus one. Right, this is the Thracian one. Go to the next one, and look, there's a bunch of other Orpheuses here. Yeah, did you even know, like many of us, many people here, be honest with yourself, you're studying these mystery religions. Take it down. You're studying these mystery religions, right? You want to know. That's, that's what's driving us, right? You want to know so that you can say what Jesus was doing with that naked kid. You want to know. And right in the middle of all this, you realize, oh, shit, I didn't know there's more than one Orpheus. Yeah, it's just a name, bro. Right? And you mean these other ones are poets too? Yeah. Right? And nobody knows. A, no, look, we've got fragments from them. This is fantastic. Right? Bible scholars, they never touch this stuff. Why would they never touch this stuff? I don't know. I'm asking genuinely because I don't know. It boggles my mind. Whenever I come across a biblical scholar who has no idea about anything, outside of the new testament i'm always shocked i'm like can you claim really to be an expert in this language if all you've read is one thing out of thousands upon thousands upon thousands there's 400 pages of this text that i'm showing you with these different authors different ancient authors there's 400 pages of it and there's two to three per page two to three per page my God, did you know there was that many? There's 500,000 copies, 500,000 scrolls in Alexandria alone. Yeah, don't think that there aren't books all over the place, right? If you are wealthy in antiquity in Rome, you got scrolls. You got scrolls. You send your kids to Athens. Why do you send them there? It's for the Greek, bro. It's for the Greek. This Greek can open your brain. 
Not modern Greek. Modern Greek's been enslaved by the church. Yeah. See what happens, people? Julian was right. We're going to lose it. We're going to lose everything. 30%, they told me in history. It's got to be 30%. And then it kicks over. Go for it. Well, a couple more, and then we'll... we'll uh, oh, here, I just gave you... <laughs> Yeah, so Terijos, I just want to give you, this is interesting because who is this writer of epic poetry, right? He's got Soter in his name. I just wanted you to see that he's got Soter in his name. But um, he's going to be talking about some pretty cool stuff. He's writing about the Basards, you know, or, you know, uh, otherwise called, the. Uh, he's writing a Dionysiaca. Wait a minute, what? Yes another you said i thought there was only one no no no. there's multiple right all of a sudden do you realize how small a view of antiquity you've been getting you mean there are other epics other than nonus about dionysus yep yeah you mean the epithets that jesus is using as jesus christ are all bacchic epithets yep you mean hallelujah is a Greek expression? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You see what you have to do is you have to build. You have to build your own foundation. If you don't have one, if all you got sand, you got to build a foundation. You got to put something, make it work. Right? You can't just start on the sand. Right? It's probably going to sink anyway. Right? Go somewhere else. <laughs> Yeah, take Philo with you, right? <laughs> Josephus was a liar. He was an out-and-out -out liar. It's amazing. People will believe anything if you write it down. And, of course, what are they all writing in? Greek. <laughs> Anywho, go. Go. This is, I'm sorry. Do that. Do that. I think it's too, I think it's abusing the biblical scholars too much. Can we get the excessive abusing the biblical scholars? Sound, do we have that anywhere, Chewy? Can you key that up? Stop! Stop! He's already dead. Yeah, exactly. Right? Come on, man. You gotta feel bad for him. All they've got is a text that's from a defunct language that somebody propped up and shocked a couple times with the battery and it twitched. Right? Come on, man. I want to show you a woman. I want to show you a woman. And this is in response. This last little bit is going to be my response to Bart Ehrman. My response to Bart Ehrman. Bart, you stepped in it. You stepped in it, Bart. You know you did when you said this week that people in antiquity all thought that women were inferior to men. They were not finished creations. And Bart, you know what you've done, Bart. Right? You've taken a 2,000-year period, Bart, with hundreds of cultures, and you smashed them all together under the power of Aristotle and his misogyny. You smashed it all together. And you did that, Bart, because I know what you did. You wiggled out from the generation, the generation of scholars who were saying, Women did nothing in the ancient world. They did nothing. Yeah. They were chattel. They were chattel. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Bart. But you know as well as I do. Or maybe they don't teach you in biblical studies. But you should know that a generalization like that about antiquity, you're never, there's no generalization that you can prop up. Right? I can walk you over to the Amazonians who are kicking the Athenians' tails in battle and tell them, hey, what do you think? <laughs> you could tell Medea that, but she wouldn't care because she's already sending out Pythias all over the planet. Yeah, yeah. You got them as far west as Brittany. They go beyond the Hesperides, beyond the Hesperides. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. But that's okay. Bart, Bart, I know that you can't help it because there's a certain load of stank that you have to bear within the discipline. I get that. Um, 
but that doesn't that that doesn't mean that you aren't doing something that huh, is disrespectful to the muse right classical philologists texts that's what we are right we work with the text we don't dig in the dirt we have to you have to a certain amount but we don't dig in the dirt that we leave that to the archaeologists we dig through the text we dig through the text i want to get you this woman bring bring her in finally somebody is this is this she that i was looking for just a minute ago and you look at the top and the greek students look at that hypatia we're going to be talking about hypatia she's one of the authors that um you know is mentioned and in this in this uh source and i just want you to know um let, let's put it up there i want to translate it for him because oh yeah this is yeah she's the daughter the hypatia is the daughter of the geometrician theon yeah and um she was a uh, sorry he's a philosopher in alexandria and she too it was a philosopher yeah and famous was known by many people yeah 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 she was the wife of, no no sorry um blah, blah, blah. um she grew to her acme oh isn't that nice isn't that nice she grew to her acme in the um kingship of uh arcadius okay cool and what did she do she wrote a notes she wrote notes or a synopsis of the, um, the, these mathematical works of Diophantes. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And some, something on Astronomicon. Yeah, something about astronomy. Yeah, and also Apollonius, right? Apollonius, she wrote, a, she wrote again some notes on that. And what did she do? She was killed by the Alexandrians. And her body, right, was grossly killed maltreated cut up spread through the city yeah and she suffered this he says Tuto de peponte. she suffered this why thonon thonon you atheists won't understand this thonon give me the next give me the greek for thonon yeah what is it ill will or malice yeah, a little bit of jealousy, a little bit of jealousy, a little bit of grudging feeling. Why? Why did they grudge this woman? What, did, what, what could she possibly begrudge them? Bring it back up. Well, it's because of her wisdom, most especially, you know, because of the, her incredible astronomical knowledge. Take it down. What a bunch of dogs. What a bunch of... Oh, I can't even say. I love dogs too much. Yeah, I don't know what kind of animal um, acts that way. I don't. But I do know that that animal is traditionally carrying a cross or an eight-pointed star or a crescent moon. And usually somebody's getting enslaved in the process and it's typically women. Those sisterhoods of the frustration, I know you, I know where you are. Yeah, yeah. Hypatia, what beauty, right? You notice I didn't read to you. There's descriptions of her and how she looked and all that stuff, right? But what was beautiful about Hypatia is that her understanding of the cosmos was so superior that it made people hate her for it. People who followed Yahoo. Yeah. When you take a polytheistic society in which justice thrives, when you take that society and give a third of the people power over everyone else, that third can turn that society upside down. They don't have to be a majority. And that's exactly what the Christians did. And with the Christians having taken over the Romans, right, having taken over the empire and having um, um, mismanaged it so poorly that it was falling apart, yeah, yeah, more additional wars. 
Nice. Good job. Um, having done all of that, there had to be built some kind of facade of scholarship. And that scholarship came through the Masoretic sect, which provided that source that we didn't have. It finally solidified that this language is the language of God. Yeah. Yeah. That's how history is built, and that's where you are. But we're going back to that original. Um, tonight, I had a couple. I think I had one or two more things, but I wanted you to, I wanted you to see. I wanted us to end um, with the resurrection of that vampire that Baudelaire is talking about. Yeah, she that Baudelaire, who Baudelaire is talking about. Yeah, um, these are the texts, people. If you would like to refute. If you would like to critique, um, or as some of the comments said, um, to debunk, if you would like to debunk any of those texts, feel free. Have at it. Yeah, go ahead. But if you notice tonight, guys, all I did, all I did was bring you texts. This is what Bible studies will die from when classicists stand up master those texts and bring you the beauty yeah yeah that's the way we we build that museum we build that museum thank you guys for giving me so much time tonight i'm not gonna i'm not gonna take any more of your time it's an honor hail satan Maybe we could walk together again.